Hi everybody, it's me Brandy with the Vintage Design and Decor and I'm bringing a craft to you today that is an easy simple craft that I've been wanting to make for about a month now when I first got this one piece from Dollar General. It's an easy Dollar General and Dollar Tree um, supply list that you'll need but it makes a beautiful Christmas decor piece. So the first thing you're going to need is you don't have to use one of these. You can get any mason jar if you want to or any type of vessel like this. This was $8 from Dollar General. I had a hard time finding these. My friend picked one up first and I wanted to find one and not every Dollar General has them. They all, I noticed they all have different things seasonally. So this one, if you can't find it, don't fret. You can find something at a thrift store that you can use. This is a cloche. Um, this actually is glued in, so it's a, like a cloche top and then a base. And then, um, like I said, you could also use a mason jar if you needed to. The other thing I picked up from Dollar General is this, um, which I already used a little bit of it. This has a chip clip on it, but it's this uh, snowflake uh, type item. You could use the stuff that isn't flaky and it's just the sheet of white cotton, or you could use cotton balls if you want to keep it even cheaper. And then I picked up from Dollar Tree because I didn't really like the ones at Dollar General. They were a little too big. Um, I picked up from Dollar Tree a pack of each of these bottle brush trees. They were a dollar a pack. So I used three of them in this. I, I did test out one of my other ones that I got and actually the base was broken on it. So I used it as a test subject. <laughs> and um, three fit in here really nicely. They also have little characters and little um, red trucks, so you can do other items in here if you wanted to, a little Santa figurine, but I just kept with the bottle brush trees, and I used a big one and a small one, and then one of the other ones in here. Um, you could use the big or the small. I used, I think, the bigger one. So I had two big and a small in the test one. And then the only other thing you're gonna need is a glue gun. And you don't even have to use a glue gun if you have um, some other type of glue you want to do, like E6000 or something like that, you can use that as well. So it's a really easy, cheap craft, and yeah, let's get started. So the first thing you obviously want to do is take off all of the cellophane wrapping that they have on this cloche. And I also kind of double checked to make sure that it was stable and that this top wasn't coming out because the other one that I did purchase that was had the broken base, the top also came out. It's just glued in there cheaply from the manufacturer. So if it is a little wonky, you may want to pull that out and re-glue it. And here I'm just wiping out the inside because it felt kind of dusty. Not necessarily dust dusty, but that kind of residue you have when things have been wrapped in a factory. And it just needed a nice clean so that when you do seal it up, you don't see any type of dust in the cloche. That makes your glass look a little foggy. I'm going to use both of the trees. I'm gonna use, I think two big ones and one small one is the look that I like best. And the white trees to me aren't as pretty as the green, so I'm only going to use one of the white trees. And I always make sure that I dry fit things as well before I start gluing things down. And with the bottle brush trees, you can kind of squeeze them together and make sure that they fit tightly next to each other and kind of form them as well too. And that'll give them a little bit more of an organic look to where they look a little more naturally put together versus just stuck in there. Then you just wanna take your hot glue and glue it to the base of the trees that way you can maneuver them around
And then, of course, I always tend to go a little excessive on the glue. You'll see. <laughs> Just kind of give them a push, make sure they're on there. And then double check to make sure your clothes will close. And you can move on to the next step, which is gluing down the snow around the base. This is the part that gets messy. This is the part that I always burn myself. So be careful because you will see, yep, that it sticks to you and that you burn yourself. But what I usually tend to do is I put a little bit of glue on. And what I found too is that you don't need a lot of this snow. And when some of the glue starts to stick to this snow, it actually kind of forms like this little glob of a snowball. And that actually sticks better to where you put your glue versus trying to do the loose snow. So you just wanna work in small sections because obviously your glue is gonna dry quickly. And the little bit of snow that you put on actually will fall down onto a plate. I put a paper plate underneath it and you can use the stuff that falls down onto the paper plate. So it actually does not take a lot. You'll see me kind of using a lot here, but um, that bag of snow will probably last me 10 years at the amount of snow that I'm using on this project. definitely want to make sure that you're checking it often to make sure your cloche will fit back on and that this snow is not going to be in the way of the lip where the cloche will sit. So sorry for the background noise, guys. I didn't realize that my Roomba, which was in the other room, was making that much noise to where you could hear it in the video once I sped it up. Here I am putting glue all around the edge so that I can put the cloche on and it will securely stay together. And then I'm going around and cleaning up any excess glue that squeezed out after I put the cloche on because that just looks sloppy if you leave it there and you want to do it while it's still warm that way you can easily pull it out here I am actually showing you the top because I'm going to cover up that um, top area there with some um, twine some jute twine and you can find this at any craft store or you can even find some at um, Dollar Tree in different sizes and I just put a little hot glue right where I started it at, and then I kind of push it down so that it doesn't fray. And you're gonna cover it up anyways. And then when you do this, make sure you find your front part that you like, want to look at. Because if you just randomly start wherever, um, you could end up putting kind of the ugly part, so to speak, of the start of the twine right where you want to have your focal point. So. Uh, pay close attention to that and then also to the if you do use this particular container or one that does have like a seam line in it in the glass make sure you pay attention to where that seam line is and that that's not running also in the front of where you want your uh, piece to be kind of front facing put those on the side and um, just pay attention to that because I did forget that in my um, test one and the seam is actually going down the front of it so it's you know it's a it's a learning process <laughs> um, and then here I just do occasionally a little dab of glue that way it just stays secure and you want to keep kind of pushing your twine down so it stays nice and tight and just keep wrapping it 
Once you're finished, just tie it off in a cute little bow. And what I do is actually take a little dab of glue towards the end of where I cut it off at, and that'll just keep it from fraying. And then you're done. Here is the final product. I just love how it turned out. I love this container. It has such a beautiful French country look to it. It could even be farmhouse if you chose a different ribbon or maybe a buffalo check or something, but I just love it. It's beautiful. I hope you guys try this craft at home. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.